Okay, FAQ number 64, does baptism save? Well, go to Acts chapter 2, starting at verse 37. Here is uh, Peter is preaching on the day of Pentecost. It says, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay, so there you see salvation. Now turn in your Bible back to 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 21. Well, actually, verse 20, it says there, uh, eight souls were saved by water. Uh, the like figure, verse 21, the like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. Okay, so let's just stop there. So in other words, between Acts chapter 3 and 1 Peter here, you just ignore all that stuff in there. Okay, because salvation is by baptism, and so you just forget everything that's in between there in the Pauline epistles, just forget that. Or if you're hyper-dispensational, you say, well, you see, this is the, the first church here, and then the church of the one body shows up with Paul and goes to the rapture, but Peter and James and John and things, they're all uh, not part of the body, the same body that Paul is part of. No, what you do is you realize that the book of Acts is a transitional book. Okay, so what's going on here in the early part of the book of Acts, the gospel is being given to the Jewish people exclusively. And as time goes by, more and more it goes to the Gentiles, and the nation of Israel finally rejects Jesus Christ as their Messiah nationally. There's still a lot of individual Jews that get saved, but it really goes to the, the Gentiles then uh, as a result there. So to take something from the early part of the book of Acts and say this is doctrine and we'll just ignore the rest, that's a problem. Let me show you something here. Uh, Acts chapter 16. I'll show you some of this transition. Of course, we can't go over every verse talking about salvation, but Acts chapter 16, verse 30, uh, talking about the, the keeper of the jail here, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Verse 31, And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his straight way. So they were baptized, but it came after salvation. Okay, so it was not repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Right? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I remember there was this, this uh, preacher, I saw him a couple times, this, this uh, black preacher named Geno Jennings. I think it was like the first Church of the Apostles creed or something like this and him and there was a bunch of other ones around america i guess they're still around and these guys all had the same diction all had the same pronunciation of, of words it was kind of weird uh, it's not the holy spirit that leads people to do that by the way but um and he would teach acts 238 acts 238 is the gospel it's the gospel and if you're not and it wasn't that you could even be baptized in the name of the father and the son and the holy ghost no it had to be baptized in the name of jesus christ if you're not baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and your baptism wasn't legitimate, and if you're not a member of our church, then you're going to hell too or something. You know, it's just a bunch of demoniac nonsense. But the book of Acts is a transition book. Okay, So you've got you to gotta rightly divide the word of truth again. Turn to 1 Corinthians. If you want the best uh, verse on salvation for a Christian today, what is the plan of salvation, so to speak? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, Paul writing here, of course, if you don't know that. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory that what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that He was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that He was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. And it keeps going down through there. Uh, where is baptism in that? It's not there. Let's get back to 1 Peter chapter 3 and actually look at what it says back here. Go up to verse 20. 
It says here, which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. Okay. Uh, there are, and there's a big study too, this thing of seven baptisms. And can't get into that right now, but the, I think I might have even talked about that in my study on baptism. Uh, does baptism save? But look at verse 21. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So baptism here is, is the Holy Spirit baptism that comes upon you when you get saved. And it doesn't mean you start rattling off some blibberty blabberty language. No, it's... The whole, your spirit is dead in trespasses and sins, but when the Holy Spirit comes in, you're quickened, you're made alive. Now you can understand the Bible, now you can understand things, see things the way God wants you to see things. Okay, At salvation that that happens. It isn't that you get saved and you've got to go to the charismatic service and come down front and then receive the initial evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Okay, That baptism of the Holy Spirit comes upon you when you get saved. You don't get, you can't be walking around, I'm a saved Christian, but I don't have the Holy Spirit yet. He comes later. That doesn't work. <laughs> if you don't have the Spirit of, of, of God there, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're not saved. Okay, you're not, you know, it's kind of like saying, I'm saved, I just don't really know God, you know, He's not really living in me yet. Then you're not saved. Okay, the Holy Spirit comes upon you at salvation. But, um, this verse right here is talking about in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21, it's talking about that Holy Spirit baptism that comes upon you. Um, baptism, if you are saved out there, you've put your faith in Jesus Christ, you've, you've been born again, um, baptism is merely there to show uh, it's kind of a consecration type of a thing in terms, and what is consecration? Well, it's just saying... Uh, I'm saved. It's a public profession of faith saying I'm saved, I'm born again, and I am. my old man died and was buried. I'll do it this way. My old man, here, here I am, my old man. I go down, I'm buried, and I come up as a new creature in Christ Jesus. It's purely symbolic is all it is today. Um, if the rapture happens and you have not been baptized yet, you've been saved for a little while, but just nobody in your area can baptize you, um, you know, if that's the case, you're still going to go up. Okay, you're saved by faith. You know, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, there's not a mention of baptism in there. Baptism is a, is a good thing to do. I'm not certainly not against it, but it doesn't have anything to do with your salvation. Uh, and these cults like the Church of Christ and uh, this First Church of the Apostles Creed or whatever the thing was, uh, they're ridiculous. They're nonsense. And they're actually leading people to hell. Because if you're just getting, you know, dunked in water and you come back up and things and you don't have any, you know, you haven't come to God as a sinner and you haven't put your faith in Jesus Christ uh, and you just did this little ordinance thing of baptism, uh, that's not going to work. Uh, you're not saved by that. So, you know, be real careful about people trying to take doctrine out of Matthew chapter 5 through 7, Acts chapter 2. Um, real careful about that. Uh, if you can't find it in the Pauline epistles, or the Pauline epistles are saying something different than what's going on there in Acts chapter 2 or Matthew 5 through 7 or even in most of the Gospels um, in terms of salvation and things like that, eh, really careful. Uh, those, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. I understand that. But you got to be real careful with doctrine. So does baptism save you today? No. It doesn't. All it is is just an outward showing of, of I'm dead and buried with Christ and I'm a new creature now. It's a good thing to do, but it's, it's not going to keep you from getting into heaven if you haven't been baptized.